Like many artists, Steve Doherty was interested in creating art even as a child. His parents, friends, and teachers referred to him as the kid with the artistic ability, starting when one of his first grade drawings was reproduced in the Times-Picayune newspaper. After his family moved from New Orleans to Cincinnati, he joined art classes at the Cincinnati Art Museum and continued participating in those classes through high school. At 15, Steve received a scholarship to spend six weeks at a summer music and art camp at the University of Kansas. After graduating from college and earning a Master's of Fine Arts degree in printmaking from Cornell University, Steve taught art in public schools, a community college, a private college, and worked for a screen printing supply company in Chicago. While working in Chicago, he responded to an advertisement for the job as editor of American Artist. At the age of 30, Steve was hired as editor-in-chief of the monthly magazine. Over the next 31 years, Steve launched several new magazines, joined the advisory boards of artist organizations and schools, wrote books, lectured to art organizations, and exhibited his paintings with galleries. Some of Steve's most memorable times as a magazine editor were at the special events he was able to organize. Those included a series of invitational painting events at a Louisiana plantation, the home of J. Alden Weir in Connecticut, a vast ranch in Colorado, a stately manor home in London, a 17th century chateau in France, and a private estate in Southampton, New York. Steve was able to include top professional artists as well as promising young painters in those groups while supporting their careers with magazine cover stories, sales of their work, and exhibition in the Forbes magazine galleries in New York City. Steve feels he owes a great deal to the mentors who helped him become a better editor and painter. During his tenure there, Steve met some of the greatest living artists of all time, including Andrew Wyeth, Clyde Aspavig, Scott Christensen, Donald Barkety, June Wayne, Paul Cadmus, Janet Fish, Philip Perlstein, Jack Beale, and even Thomas Kincaid and Bob Ross. In 2010, Eric Rhodes asked Steve to join him for a day of painting in the Adirondacks. It was a wet day. Steve fell in the river he was crossing, and it rained most of the day. So Eric and Steve hunkered down in the car waiting for the rain to stop, which allowed them to get acquainted. Eric wanted Steve to become the editor of Plain Air magazine, but it was not to be at that time. Yet they stayed in touch, and a year later, Steve agreed, but suggested he would only do it for a couple of years because he wanted to retire to paint. Steve stayed for seven. Steve's objective now is to make painting his first priority every day. He's gladly taken volunteer work for a local art school and his church, but is happy to say that he plans each week according to the weather forecast and weather predicts favorable conditions for outdoor painting. He has joined some of the wonderful plein air festivals that are within driving distance of his home, but is just as happy painting with friends or traveling on his own to fascinating painting sites. Steve is passionate about plein air painting, the plein air movement, and plein air magazine, and has played a significant role in exposing plein air painting to the art world. We celebrate his over three decades as a leader and editor in the art community. Please join us in honoring outgoing editor-in-chief of Plain Air Magazine, Steve Doherty.